Hey guys, it's Rodway here, and today we are looking at another tutorial. And um, today's topic is letter art photography, or as it's uh, commonly known, uh, alphabet photography. Whatever um, you search up, you should be able to find. So let's take a look at what this looks like. Um, this was an idea of um, a lady, I believe her name is Jennifer. Uh, you can look up her full name if you're interested, uh, who created or developed the idea. I'm just going to look up her site of finding letters in common things around the world. All right, so if I type my last name, for example, Rogaway, create my word, this website will generate my last name using um, objects from around the world or whatever this library has. So you can kind of see the R, the O, the G, the O, the W, and the Y. And I can click and change it to whatever I want. Again, this website has thousands um, to pick from. And you can see how I can kind of customize my last name to whatever I want it to look like. So that's the effect we're going for. And I'm going to show you how to get there. Things that you can look for in your photos to um, create that sort of an effect. All right, so let's just put that down. We'll uh, leave that for later. So in the folder, I have shown or I've uh, got some photos of different possible letters. And again, this is what you got to do is you got to go out and look for things that could be letters. All right. And so that's what we've got to work with. We're going to start with this one here. 4952. We're going to open it with Photoshop. Now the real key thing here to make your photo work is you need to have some contrast between the letter and the things around it. So you can see in this case, um, I'm going to call this an H because I got lines on both sides. And you can see that the elements around it are darker than the bricks, obviously, so that H really stands out. First thing we're going to do is we're going to crop it. And most of the store-bought ones are square. Uh, as far as each picture goes, so we're going to take the crop tool. And what we're going to do is up here where it says unconstrained, we're going to change that to one by one square. And we're just going to pick the part of the photo that shows that letter the best. I like to center them. And then we're going to hit return or enter to crop that. Next thing we want to do is we want to increase the contrast so that we can see the letter better. We're going to go image, adjustments, brightness, contrast, and I'm going to pretty much crank that contrast up. And I can tweak the brightness a bit just so that that really pops. Just like that. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to go to image, adjustments, black and white. And this is where we can tweak it even more to make that letter stand out. So you can see that the red is going to affect that path a bit. And the yellow is really going to affect the grass around it. I don't recommend that you make it completely black because then you lose that detail that you want to see in the uh, you know elements that are around it. But just kind of tweak it. All right, I'm going to hit OK. All right, so I kind of feel that that is standing out nicely. All right, the next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to go to Image Mode Grayscale. We're going to get rid of all the color. It'll ask, do you want to discard? Let's get rid of that. Then we're going to go Image Mode Duotone. And we're just going to make sure that our type here is set to Duotone. All right, it might be set to Monotone by default. We're going to switch it to Duotone. And now we get a second ink that we can choose. So we just click this and pick a nice second color. 
I suggest you go with something um, something light, you know, picking it near the white area, that'll give you a better effect, because if you go too dark, it'll make the photo look dark. You want to go somewhere up near the, the white in the top left corner. Then hit OK. Now one thing about the Duotone windows, you have to name your colors, so I'm going to call this sepia, or sepia, and hit OK. And now what we have to do is we have to make room for the next letter or, or the you know bunch of letters we're going to add. And the easiest way to do this is to stay on the crop tool, but change it up here to unconstrained. And now take this handle here on the right hand side, pull it over, give yourself lots of room because we're going to add a few more letters. And let's just check that out. Eh, I'm going to go a little bit more even, just to make sure I got enough room. And it'll make the background color whatever your background color is in your swatches down here. So make sure white usually works best, or black is good too. And I'm going to hit enter or return, and now I've got that extra room. So let's go on to the next letter. In the next letter, we're going to go with this one. 4888, oh, sorry, 4886, open that up, exact same steps, it is a little repetitive, we're going to go to our crop tool, set it to square, make sure the letter, I think this kind of looks like an O, we're going to crop that, we're going to increase the contrast, alright, bring that up a bit, and then we're going to go to image adjustments black and white, take the color out of it. This time we're going to actually brighten the greens around it so that it uh, helps that letter stand out. Again, depending on which, what your photos look like, you might have to either lighten or darken the elements around it. I'm going to hit OK. Now the cool thing is, because this file is set up as a duotone, all we have to do is move this and drop it into here, and it's going to already apply that duotone effect to it, that sepia or sepia effect already on there. And we just got to move it into place. No problem. Easy. So we got HO. Let's go on to the next one. So we're going to go with this one. 4874 and we're going to just bring that over and here's one um, it's obviously a P we got a lot going on around it and we don't need the whole entire image so we're going to again go to the crop tool we can actually crop this one a little bit closer we don't need all that extra space around it and again just making sure that the letter is the focus that it's nice and central so that uh, we can see what that letter is. Adjustments, black and white. I could have did contrast, but I'm going to just do this first. All right, in this case, we want to darken the grass to make that letter stand out. And I think cyan's will help us a bit with the letter itself. We just want to create it so that this letter stands out really good on its own. These aren't going to change much, no. Okay, so in this case, the greens was probably the most effective adjustment we made. And again, remember not to completely lose all your detail, otherwise you lose the effect. I'm going to hit OK. Same thing, move it over to that first file, drop it in. You can see this one's a little bit smaller because we cropped it a little smaller. We're going to press Command T to transform it and just kind of fit it in. Now because it's square, they'll end up at the right size as long as they fit um, in the height of this thing. So we got hop. And what I might do is just kind of tweak this by moving it over a bit by going to those layers and just pushing them over just so I got enough room for the last letter. Just like that. Now the last one is uh, what to do if you come across a letter but it's not necessarily going the right way. So I'm going to use this image, 4910. Open it with Photoshop. 
The last letter I want is to ha or to have is an E. And I can see that there's an E in here, but um, it's not photographed in the right way, probably because the glass was up and down. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to image, image rotation. We're going to go 90 degrees counterclockwise. And now we're able to get that E out of there a little bit better. So we're going to just kind of zoom in, go to the crop tool, set it to square. And now we're going to do a real, whoops, we're going to do a real tight crop. on just the part that we want. So in this case, to get that E, we really only need a tiny part of the picture, something like that. And you can see that it's a little off, so we can rotate that crop a bit too, and then hit enter or return, and we end up with that E from a much larger image. So now the next is all the same as before, image adjustments, we go with contrast here, bring it up, make those black lines really stand out. It's important that you keep that little bit of detail there so that people know that um, it was a photograph and not just lines drawn on a Photoshop document. Go to black and white, tweak it a bit, all right, to what you think looks good. It's, a, it's up to you, all right, almost there. I like that. I'm going to drag it over and release it. Okay, and it's small because we cropped it tight, so we're going to go Command T. I'm going to scale it up just like that. And there we go. Now you'll notice that I got a little bit of extra space on the end. So here's how you get rid of that. And I don't know why Photoshop doesn't. You'll see it's kind of kind of weird. Uh, you go to the crop tool. Because we are set to square, we have to change it to unconstrained. Then what I do is I go to the move tool to get rid of the crop tool. And I go back to the crop tool and now the unconstrained setting has given us the whole canvas to adjust. Whereas before it was just a small square. So now I can grab that right handle. I can pull it in hit enter return and I end up with my final sort of letter art creation. All right, so the word is hope. All right, so hopefully, hope, hopefully um, that helps. And um, what I strongly suggest you do to, not only for to create kind of a neat thing like this, but also to kind of be aware of environments that you're working in is go out and see if you can see letters just in everyday you know, objects outside or wherever. Uh, just see if you can see them out there and then take photos, bring them back and try to make some words. You know, it's nice to maybe make your last name or your first name and, and these make great gifts, all right? Especially if it's personalized. And to give you an example, let's say um, I wanted to make one for my cottage and every letter was something around or nearby the cottage. You know, that has a much more sort of sentimental value than just random photos from all over the place. So see what you can do. Come up with something creative and uh, show me your results. All right, make sure you save this. I'm just gonna call it hope to the desktop. All right, and until next time, keep shooting and have fun.